Welcome back to the latest edition of Conference Chatter TV, where after the fifth week of college football action, the hits just keep on coming for playmakers on the Oklahoma Sooners offense, and two backup quarterbacks lead their respective teams to victory. Thanks for checking out another edition. My name is Eric Sorrentino, and you can follow my stuff on KUSports.com. Well, we're on site today here at the Lawrence Journal World News Center, and uh, we're reflecting a little bit on the fifth week that was in the Big 12 Conference football season. Only six games were played. I went four and two, not the strongest showing, but uh, that'll leave our season mark at 39 and 10. I'm now below 80% again at 79.5%. So let's go over what happened. Starting off with the biggest game of the night, it was Miami against Oklahoma. A 21-20 victory for Miami, and, and this game, this, here's how close this game was. I was looking at this. Okay, we're just going to go over a few basic stats here. First downs, OU 21, Miami 20. And coincidentally, the score went the other way. Of course, Miami won 21-20. But anyways, total net yards, Miami 344, OU 343. Punts, they both punted five times. A very, very close game, but I think the difference at the end was Miami running back Javaris James, 15 carries, 148 yards, he averaged 10 yards a carry every time he touched the ball. The guy was the difference in the game, and and it was really uh, evident uh, in the last drive of the game. I mean, OU kicked the field goal. They cut it to one with 4.23 left. Uh, Miami ran six plays to run out the clock, and four of them went to James. Uh, he was very determined to come in against an OU defense that was number one in the country before the game. Uh, before Saturday's game and scoring defense, but uh, Miami pulled it out, and uh, I credit them for that. I picked Oklahoma in this game, and, and that was one of the losses. Um, <laughs> OU suffered a bigger loss uh, than, you know, they, of course, lost the game, but also lost their best receiver, Ryan Broyles, fractured left shoulder. He's going to be out four to six weeks, and again, the hits just keep on coming for OU. I mean, Sam Bradford, He's going to return soon, but of course he was out of this game. Jermaine Gresham, their star tight end, he's out the whole season. And now Broyles. I mean, this team just can't get healthy. I feel bad for him because, I mean, you look at Bradford, Gresham, and Broyles, and that's pretty much your entire passing game. I mean, it's not going to be the same without those three guys. And, and as a result, OU's 2-2 two and two after conference play. Never would have thought that the Sooners would be 2-2 two and two after, conference, after non-conference play, but here they are. And, and they're really struggling, uh, particularly their offense. Their defense is playing well, but, you know, for an offense that averaged 48 points a game last year, it's just not the same as it was last year. So I missed that game. The other one that I missed was the uh, Farmageddon game, as it was called, at Arrowhead Stadium. Kansas State 24, Iowa State 23. I picked the Cyclones. But credit K-State and credit backup quarterback Grant Gregory this guy, I mean, here's a guy who transferred twice. He signed with Indiana, then he transferred to South Florida and didn't get playing time there either and transferred to K-State. You know, the guy's a senior. He hadn't started a game since high school, led the Wildcats to victory. Give him credit. I mean, he got. this is a guy who got beat out pretty much for a starting job every place he went uh, in college, and he really gave a spark to to a K-State offense that lacked his spark at quarterback for most of the season. Daniel Thomas is a nice running back. He was, he's was he been able to move the ball for K-State on offense, but they've really been one-dimensional on offense until yesterday. Gregory, 16 of 23, 206 yards, two touchdowns, a separate rushing touchdown, and really gave the Wildcats um, just an added dimension on offense that, I mean, this was an offense that struggled to put up points at Louisiana Lafayette. I mean, it was bad, and they looked better yesterday. So I'm not saying that this is, you know, Grant Gregory is the savior of K-State for this season. I think they're still going to be, I mean, these were two teams that are that are going to finish at the bottom of the Big 12 North along with Colorado. But, you know, it, it was a great story, uh, Gregory stepping in and, and leading the Wildcats to victory, and, and that was nice to see. So I picked uh, Iowa State in that one, so that was my, my second loss. Uh, the rest of the games that took place on Saturday, uh, were predicted victories. Texas Tech 48, New Mexico State 28. I thought it would be, you know, I thought Tech would blow them out a little bit more than that. But the story in this one was Taylor Potts um, injuring, uh, he got injured in the second quarter, 
The Lubbock Avalanche Journal is reporting that it was a concussion that he suffered. He didn't come back in the game in the second half. Um, and here's the, the kind of backup quarterback theme coming in again. Steven Sheffield. How about this guy? 16 of 23, 238 yards, three touchdowns, and gave, gave the Red Raiders some, some added energy. I mean, Potts was picked off two times early in the first half, and, and it was only 14-7 Texas Tech at the half against the totally outmatched New Mexico team. And Sheffield came in and, and really ignited some energy into the Red Raiders, made it, you know, sort of out of reach in the second half. I thought it would be a lot more than 20 points, but this is kind of interesting. Mike Leach has been the coach of Texas Tech for 10 years. In that time, he's never had a starting quarterback miss a start. That could happen next week if Potts isn't, be, isn't able to go uh, at home against K-State. Uh, and if so, Sheffield proved that he's, you know, he's – perfectly capable of leading the Red Raiders down the field. So that should be kind of interesting to keep an eye on. Um, I, I was kind of looking around. Some of the Red Raider fans and on the message boards and stuff like that maybe were wondering a little bit of a quarterback controversy with Sheffield and Potts. I don't see it that way. I see Potts. This is Taylor Potts' job. Uh, Sheffield played very well. And uh, if Potts isn't able to go next week against K-State, you know, Red Raider fans have to feel comfortable with the job that, that Sheffield did against New Mexico. Other games that I predicted correct were uh, Arkansas uh, against A&M, although 47-19 in favor of the Razorbacks. I did not predict it going uh, or being that much <laughs> of a blowout in favor of the, of the Razorbacks. Ryan Mallett, four TD passes. I thought that Arkansas would be able to move the ball uh, via the pass, but that, I mean, A&M had a 10-0 lead and suddenly evaporated like, I, like nothing happened. Arkansas just um, too fast on both sides of the ball for A&M. And, and that was, a, that was a, a question coming into the game. A&M played three teams that they, were, they just manhandled and, and really hadn't seen a test until they ran into the Razorbacks, and you saw what happened. Um, Baylor, 31. Kent State, 15. Credit Nick Florence, the third string quarterback, again with this backup quarterback theme here in the Big 12. The third string quarterback for Baylor did a nice job of filling in for, for Robert Griffin and of course Blake Samansky who wasn't able to go either. 20 of 27 was Florence in the air and then he had two TD runs so really gave Baylor a nice, a nice spark there off the bench. Uh, and then earlier on Thursday, West Virginia 35, Colorado 24. That was kind of a, a predicted win for West Virginia, not too tough to predict with the, with the struggles that, that Colorado has run into this season. So that should do it, guys. Uh, four and two this week, not too terrible. So uh, 39 and 10, not bad. 79.5% for right now. Uh, well, I appreciate you guys checking out another episode of Conference Chatter TV. I am Eric Sorrentino signing off from the Lawrence Journal World News Center. I'll talk to you guys again next week.